My name is Nate Hoff, and I'm an assistant professor of Bible exposition at Dallas Theological Seminary. 2015 was most likely the worst year of my life. My wife was having severe health problems, and we had been going to various doctors trying to figure out what was wrong with her. At the same time, we lost a child. And losing a child is one of the most painful things that I think a person can go through. As I was dealing with all of these things, I was having my own mental health problems. I remember begging my wife to divorce me. I remember being huddled in the shower, uh, crying, because I was afraid that I was going to become a really terrible person. It feels as if the work of God in my life is done. Because rather than being conformed to the image of Christ, I felt like I was moving in the opposite direction. As we were going through the process of trying to figure out what was wrong with my wife, she had a vertebrae that was fragmenting. And so she needed fairly immediate surgery, and the, the next week we went in and had the operation. As I was sitting in the waiting room, thoughts began to race through my mind. Evil thoughts. Thoughts that made me scared of myself. So after the surgery was over, I drove my wife home, and I refused to go in the house with her. I said, I don't know what's happening to me, but I'm afraid if I go inside this house, I'm gonna do something terrible. So I stayed in the driveway and picked up my phone and called one of my friends. And I said, Andy, I need you to do two things for me. I need you and your wife to take care of Abby. She's just had surgery. And I need you to take me to the ER. After waiting for a long period of time, I finally was able to see the triage nurse. And after she heard what was going on with me, she excused herself from the room. And when she returned, she was accompanied by a police officer. I remember thinking, this is it. This is what I was afraid of. Apparently, the leading of God in my life seemed to culminate in this colossal moment of failure. When I was finally seen by the ER doctors, they said, we, need, we think you need to commit yourself to a mental facility. And I said, fine. I saw things there that I, I will never forget. And as I sat there looking around, I said, this is me too. Each day, the mental facility allowed people to come and visit. I had no expectation of anyone coming. In fact, I didn't want anyone to come because I didn't want them to see me the way that I was. But when the doors opened, I saw my wife standing there, my wife, who had just had surgery the day before. I noticed that she was holding something in her hand. It was a Bible. As she came up to me, she gave me the Bible and said, I want you to do something for me. When our time together is over, I want you to go back in your room and I want you to read the passage that came to my heart. And the passage that she had selected for me was Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. 
They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. During my week in that facility, I read that verse over and over and over again. I had hope. I don't know when the things that happen inside me are going to rear their ugly heads. Sometimes I convince myself that the world would be better off if I were not here. My wife and I decided to name of the child we lost, Micah, which means who is like Yahweh. Someday I'm going to see my child again. If I could tell him anything, it would be the story of God's faithfulness in my life. What I want people to know as they experience the inevitable sufferings of this life is to not allow the suffering to determine what you believe to be true about God. On one hand, I know who God is because he's revealed himself through his word. But experiencing that God in a moment of suffering changes your life.